Look at these babies. Oh, sorry, that was probably not safe for work. Hey there, handy men and women. This is D News. I'm Trace. January 30th, 1787, Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to James Madison, and he said, I hold it that a little rebellion now and then is a good thing, and as necessary in the political world as storms in the physical. But by rebellion, I don't think he meant that candidates should debate by making fun of someone's hands and by extension their sex organs. But even still, is there any correlation between the male penis and other parts of the body? Firstly, no, nope, no, 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 none, no. A study in the journal BJU International literally looked at and systematically reviewed tens of thousands of male members to finally deflate any debate about our sizes. This and any other studies have found average penis sizes had no strong correlation with testicular size, weight, or whatever. There is very shaky evidence linking digit ratio of the second and fourth finger to hormonal exposure in the womb, which may correlate with penile proportions. The study was published in the Asian Journal of Andrology in 2013. So yes, this study of Korean men says the ratio between two of your fingers might be important. Julian and Julia covered it here, but scientists are skeptical. You know what they say about men with big feet though, right? Big shoes, and that's actually all you can really infer in this context. A study by London St. Mary's Hospital and University College Hospital of 104 men found no correlation between their shoe size and their penis size. So look, there's not really any strong, irrefutable, repeated scientific evidence that visible body parts relate in any way to penis size. The average, by the way, is 3.6 inches flaccid and 5.2 inches erect. If that seems small to you, assess why you think so. And if the answer is the sex theater of pornography, stop. The human male has the largest penis of any primate in the animal kingdom, and only five in 100 men have an erect penis over 6.3 inches. And after all of that, if you're worried about penis size, welcome to the club. Only a third of men surveyed were satisfied with theirs, according to a 2013 Journal of Sexual Medicine paper. The researchers said that most men surveyed had issues with their height, weight, and penis size. Their feelings on the matter were heavily tied to their self-esteem. And in fact, the researchers found no matter the size, some people were just bratwurst braggarts, even those with a teeny weeny. Finally, women surveyed in a paper in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in 2013 found size is just one little factor in a huge array of measures of attractiveness. Big dongs were related to attractiveness, but small ones didn't hurt attractiveness. The ladies honestly just didn't care about it that much. As Science Magazine wrote, quote, to really reap the benefits of a big penis, a guy needs to be attractive in the first place. Also, attractiveness aside, does the size of pretty much anything under your clothes make you a good or bad leader? We are watching people vying for the most powerful office in the United States, verbally measuring, fat shaming, and comparing hairstyles. They're concentrating on appearance and people aren't laughing at them, but with them. But even still, they're not alone. Appearance is something that politicians worry about. For example, why don't campaigning dudes have beards anymore? Find out in this video. Lincoln grew his famous chin curtain at the behest of an 11-year-old girl when she told him it would help his thin face and women would tease their husbands to vote for him. This was during the late 19th century when beards were coming into vogue as a way of symbolizing masculinity and authority. Do you guys think it's fair to make fun of somebody's self-esteem in a presidential debate? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more D News and we will be here every day. Thanks for watching.